Real quick, I just want to give a huge thank you to Triple Scoop Music for providing all of the songs you're hearing on this episode. Make sure and check out their website to browse through their huge selection of great music to use on your next project. Hey everyone, this is Garrett here, and today we're going to be talking about using the Sony A7 III for shooting wedding video. Hello everybody, and welcome to Las Vegas. Okay, so Sony was kind enough to invite us to the A7 III launch party in Las Vegas. At this point, nobody really knew what Sony was going to announce, but the rumor stated that this new Sony a7 III would be at the forefront of this announcement. To make a long story a little bit shorter, throughout the announcement, my eyes just kept getting wider and wider and wider as they kept showing us all the features that the 7 III had. The amazing quality is driven by a brand new backside illuminated 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor. Our new sensor. An incredible autofocus system that punches way above its class. After the announcement, they had several bodies ready to go for us to shoot on and bring some images home. And I was one of the first people in line to get my hands on that and play with it at all these amazing sets they had set up for us to shoot the camera. Now, this camera was announced as the basic model. I don't understand why they call it a basic. I mean, I do understand why they call it a basic, but it is anything but basic. It really surprised me how many features they pulled from their other top-end cameras and packed into this, again, entry-level camera. Luckily, I was able to sweet talk some of our favorite Sony people, and they were kind enough to let us bring one home to shoot an actual wedding, and that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Away when I got my hands on it, I immediately felt at home because it felt just like my A9 and my A7R3. The new form factor is a much needed improvement over the older Sony bodies. Although very small and compact, they were almost too compact for me without like a battery grip. So with the new body style, it's more ergonomic and it's easier for me to hold on to. One of the major advantages to having that larger form factor body is that they have incorporated a whole new battery system that is over twice the capacity of the older style. At this wedding I shot, I think it was about 12 hours long, so I went from very early in the morning at the hotel all the way to the sparkler exit at the end of the night, and I went through right at three batteries. Now, that is a huge improvement over on my older system. I would use maybe eight the entire day. So only having to carry three batteries with me instead of eight is a huge improvement and makes my life easier on the wedding day.
since this is an entry level camera and Sony's attempt to get it down to under $2,000, one of the ways that they did that is they lowered the resolution inside of the viewfinder and also on the LCD screen. Now, at the time that I shot this, I hadn't really read those specs yet and I didn't realize that it was even less resolution. Now, if you put it up against my A9 and look back and forth, you'll be able to tell. But honestly, the entire day, nobody had told me it was lower resolution and I really didn't notice it until I read the spec sheet. So that's something to keep in mind. This is by no means a deal breaker. Another thing about the screen that I'm really thankful they incorporated is if you're used to using like the A7S II, when you go into 4K mode, the screen automatically dims. I don't know if that's for battery or for what, but it makes it very difficult to see when you're outside shooting. With the A7R3, with the A9, and also now the A7 III, this doesn't happen. When you go into 4K, not only do you have the full brightness, but there's actually a daylight mode that you can engage and get even brighter so you can really see those images very crisply and clearly when you're outside shooting. All the clips you've seen here today were shot in S Log 3 and graded in Final Cut. Now I will say if you've never shot with Log, please take the time and practice with it because the way you have to expose for S Log is quite a bit different than a normal picture profile on your camera. So you can really accidentally easily underexpose for it. So make sure you take a little bit of extra time and practice with that log, but that's how you're gonna get that 15 stops of dynamic range out of this camera and it's gonna look marvelous. Now here is the game changer. This is what's gonna make Canon and Nikon and all those other companies wake up and like, whoa, we gotta do something because Sony is pulling out all the stops. The autofocus system, oh my goodness, it is just fantastic. Having this autofocusing system on a sub $2,000 full frame professional body is a game changer. Now, if you've been paying attention to the text on the bottom of the screen throughout this video, I shot autofocus 95% of the day. You can see more about that and how I set that up in our A7 III setup video in the link in the description below. Most of the time, I use large flexible spot autofocus with face detection enabled. For the gimbal shots, I used the zone focusing option and still used face detection. This really helped me get some of those crazy movie-like moments and movements that I could not have got any other way. There's no way I could have manually focused that, but having that autofocus system was able to lock on her face as I swirled around her with a gimbal and it just made a magnificent shot that I'm very proud of.
Okay, so a lot of people have been asking us, Garrett, Amber, does this camera overheat? Please, dear God, tell us. Very happy to report it is absolutely not overheat. Um, I used it all day long, recorded more than I usually do at a wedding. Usually I let Amber do a lot of, of recording and I do a lot of just the eye candy work, but we only had one of these cameras. So I recorded probably three times more than I usually do. And I never even had the temperature warning come up. Now, I will say that was in a very moderately um, temperature day, I would say it was probably in the 70s, maybe it got down to 60 a little bit. So it wasn't an extremely hot day. I'm very interested to see what this camera does when we're shooting on the beaches of you know Mexico or in the middle of the Midwest in the middle of August where it's 100 million degrees here. But I think they've made great strides in preventing this. Okay, now while we're on that subject, I'm gonna give you a really quick tip. If you're outside and it's the middle of summer and it's a million degrees outside and you start having any kind of temperature problems, I would suggest two things. First of all, pull your screen away from the camera. This is gonna help some of that heat escape and your camera is going to run longer. Also, in your menu, you're going to have an airplane mode. Turn that on. This is going to disengage your Wi-Fi, NFC, and all wireless communications. It's also gonna help you use less battery, which will help it go even longer on that really nice new battery system. Just a quick tip, if you are working outside in the heat quite a bit this summer. Okay, let's talk about low light. This thing is right on par. If you have ever shot with an A7S II, you're gonna be right at home with this camera. I didn't think that was gonna be the case. Um, here's an image that I threw together right before I had to send it back, comparing the video of the high ISO on the 7.3 and the A7S II. Now, early on in the day, I kept watch on my ISO settings and how much noise was coming into my video. But throughout the entire day, the longer the day went on, after the probably the first maybe three or four hours, I stopped caring because it seemed that no matter what I needed out of the camera, it gave it to me and it was a really nice, clean picture. Here's a little test I did while I was waiting for the toast and the speeches to begin. I just kind of went through and gradually went up through the ISO settings just to show you how it can perform in those really high ISO situations. Now to get my exposure correct, I did raise the f-stop as I went up just to make sure I had that proper exposure. And I was very happy and very pleased with the performance of those high ISO settings. Now, to anybody who has ever complained about Sony's menu system, they are taking strides to make that better. But to make it even better and more customized for you, they have made a total new menu all the way over on the right side of the menu system that's called My Menu. You can set that up however you want. So when you get your new camera, you sit at home and you start going off through all the options you think you're gonna use, you can put those all together in one spot that you know where they're at and you can go to it every time and they're right where you put them. Now, if you're wondering to you know how to set up all these features in the camera, because there's a lot of them, I have made an A7 III setup video just for you on how to set it up for filmmaking and video, and I think you'll find it very useful. There will be a link in the description down beneath this video somewhere. Check that out. I think you'll find it very informative. So in conclusion, who is this camera for? Personally, I would say it's for anyone who maybe has wanted to step up from an APS-C size sensor. Maybe you've been using a smaller camera that's not full frame and you just like the full frame look. I would say it's definitely for you. You can definitely get a lot out of this camera for less than $2,000. Also, if $2,000 is your budget and you're looking for a new camera system, looking for a new camera at all body, this is a great 
piece of kit for $2,000. Now, if you wanted to spend $3,000 on a camera, you could probably spend that much on this camera just because that's how much they should be charging for it. But it's it's just really, really nice piece of kit that I, I could not, after using it for a, an actual real wedding, using it professionally, I can say that I cannot recommend it highly enough. This is by far the best camera you can get for this budget. All right, guys, thanks so much for taking the time to watch our video. If you would, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. That really helps us out. And you can also leave any questions you might have in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer those for you. Thanks so much and have a great day.